Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of The Vampire Vanishes by Willis Halls. Dane reads. So this is part of a series of books I used to love as a kid about a vegetarian vampire. Uh, as always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Count Alucard is desperate to get away from it all, but unfortunately his quiet break isn't going to plan. And after being pursued by the police, pilloried by some puzzlers and harassed by whodunit enthusiasts, our favourite veggie vampire really does need to get away, and fast. So, when the vampire hunt ends up at a magic show, the Count takes centre stage to perform the amazing, the fantastic, the celebrated Transylvanian coffin illusion. But watch this space, now you see him, now you don't. So, let's go through and check out some of the bits I enjoyed. So this is a bit of information on Count Alucard, a bit, a bit of um, characterisation. Tomato juice was Count Alucard's favourite tipple. Unlike his infamous ancestors, the Count was a vegetarian vampire. If and when he turned himself into a bat, which he was more than capable of doing, he became a fruit bat and not a bat of the blood-sucking variety. Even the sight of his own blood, should he chance to cut his finger or nick his chin while shaving, was sufficient to give him shivers. And although since early childhood he had displayed the same pale complexion, the same red-rimmed eyes as his vampire forebears, the very idea of lodging his teeth into a human being's neck was enough to make his Transylvanian toes curl up inside his immaculately polished shoes and here he is a little illustration of him on an aeroplane he's coming to the UK but he has some troubles with customs and so uh, a bit more characterization here so vampires as everyone knows can only manage to sleep properly when they are cosily tucked up in their coffins with the lids shut tight they sleep through the daylight hours and spend their nights as blood drinking bats fluttering restlessly around the earth in search of human necks into which they can sink their pointy teeth all vampires that is except Count Alucard when that Transylvanian nobleman turns into a bat, he much prefers a ripe nectarine or a fleshy peach, or best of all, a nice juicy blood orange, in preference to the taste of human blood. For this reason, he has long since given up the insociable habit of taking wing by night and sleeping through the day. Although it must be stated, he still prefers his satin sheeted, cosily padded coffin to sleeping in a proper bed. I think I might be a vampire. And so here we have a list of all of the people beginning with D who are uh, not allowed entry to the UK. So we have Daleks, Deadly Poisonous Snakes, Dr. Crippen, Deceased, Dr. Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein's Monster, Dracula, in brackets, Count. And uh, here's a little bit about wolves, which I enjoy because I identify with wolves, as you can see from Mr. Wolf on my arm. Uh, Man and boy, Count Alucard had grown up with a wolf pack which hunted in the Tolokovan forest surrounding Alucard Castle. In his childhood, in the best of summers, he had frolicked with the wolf cubs in the shade of the castle's ivied walls. In the worst of winters, he had seen to it that the wolves never went hungry, filching food from under the cook's noses to meet the wolf pack's needs. Once, when he was very young and had foolishly strayed from a forest track, it had been the wolf pack leader that had guided him safely back to the castle gate. The wolves were his friends, each and every one of them, and why not? He and the wolves had much in common. They were both misunderstood and feared by the human race. Wolves had never been known to attack human beings unless the human beings had startled or attacked them first, and, of a certainty, Count Alucard had never knowingly harmed any one of God's creatures. And yet the human race had decided in its ignorance that both the wolves and he himself were its natural enemies. Count Alucard often wondered why. Because ignorance. That's exactly why. We, we hate people that are different to us. We get a slightly racist pair of uh, Pekingese dogs that are called Ching Ching and Wan Toon. Uh, we get this a little bit more characterization. His white bow tie was always neatly tied. There was never less than a knife edge crease in his smart black trousers and his shoes were always so highly polished that he could see his face reflected in them. That is to say, of course, that he would have been able to observe his face had he been so fortunate as to possess a reflection. We have Arthur, Arthur Creswell here uh, and his wife. This is just a quite sweet interaction, but it also plays into the story as well. Arthur Creswell, the Jigsaw Puzzlers Club secretary, gazed without expression at the 30,000 and then some jigsaw pieces he had tipped out of the cardboard packing case onto the sitting room carpet. Whatever are you going to do with that lot, Arthur? asked Sylvia Creswell nervously. I'm going to sort them out, Sylvia, began Mr. Cresswell, into their separate puzzles, and then I shall return them to their original boxes. My goodness me, Arthur, that's a challenge. I like a challenge, said Arthur Cresswell. He stooped and picked up a single bit of jigsaw puzzle and studied it carefully. It could have come from Dr. Livingston's jacket, or it might have been a piece from one of several boxes to do with animals and their place in jigsaw puzzles. I like a man to have a hobby, said Mrs. Cresswell. So overall, uh, what's interesting about this is I read the original books of these when I was a kid, um, but I don't think I ever read this one, so I kind of didn't have the nostalgia value going into it. Uh, this came out in the mid-90s originally, I believe, and I still really enjoyed it. Probably like a 3.5 out of 5 for me, but definitely a good one if you've got kids who are into vampires. Uh, I think this book, you know, I was reading these before the Goosebumps books and stuff like that. But also it holds up pretty good for an adult as well. It'd be a good book to read to a kid, you know. 
So there we have it, that's what I made of The Vampire Vanishes by Willis Hall. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.